Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Mark Miller at Sound Theory Studio, and uh, I'm joined by my friend Mike Cutler today. And uh, Mike is owner of the Luthiers Bench here in Tucson. Uh, I would say he's the best guitar repair guy in town. Uh, thank you. And uh, he's going to be talking to us today about an install he did for me on a couple of guitars, the Kill Switch. And uh, I'm a pretty big fan of the Kill Switch. You don't see it too often uh, amongst guitar players, and I'm not sure why, really, because I really like them. But a couple of people come to mind, uh, Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine, even though he kind of used like the toggle switch instead of an actual button. Um, but Buckethead absolutely comes to mind. That guy has kind of made it famous, if you know who he is. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm a big fan of these. Uh, Mike put a couple in for me, one on this guitar, one in an Ibanez gym, and we're going to show you both. But um, first thing I want to talk about, though, is uh, there's some misinformation on the internet regarding... The kind of button you need and uh, Mike's gonna clear that up for us but in case you're wanting to install one of these on your own um, Mike can give you some really good advice on it I can tell you when I first wanted to do this there's two kinds of buttons there's normally open and normally closed normally open in layman's terms because I'm certainly no uh, electrician or know anything about wiring but normally open just think of that as like a regular button like think of like your doorbell like it, it doesn't do anything until you push it um, normally closed then is would be the opposite of that where it's basically always on and then if you if you pu uh, push it it disconnects the signal and that's a much more rare kind of button uh, and much harder to find so the misinformation on the internet is that you have to have that that rare kind of button the normally closed button um, and the reason why is because people on the internet it seems like are wiring it in such a way that Imagine the signal, uh, the audio signal going through the guitar. They're putting the button during that signal path, and then uh, when they push the button, it interrupts the path, and uh, that's not how you want to do it. You want to use a regular button. So, right, exactly. Um, the 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 great thing about this is this is the button that we installed in Mark's white guitar, which mm -hmm. we don't, which you'll see probably later. It's a it's an arcade style button perfect yeah. for this because you're going to be if you're for the example that, that mark's going to uh, either play for you or or have on recording uh, a, a button like this is is absolutely necessary the response is, is wonderful and it's meant to be pressed thousands of times right. and a lot of the buttons that you get on um, that, that, that people will sell you they might they might fail uh, pretty quickly or quick, quicker than you you would think mm. and uh, so hopefully a button like this you're gonna put it to the test mark I know oh yeah yeah and uh, so you'll you'll let us know if it I've already hit it thousands of times probably <laughs> it's working like a champ. it's working like a champ and this one actually works really well too and I'll, I'll put some close-up pictures in the video but you can see this one's a lot smaller so if you if you look up like on the internet like say you go to Amazon and you just do a search for guitar kill switch you're going to find ones like this they're a lot smaller, more compact, and it's kind of hard to describe, but they're, they're stiffer too. Like if you push that one, there's like no resistance at all. This one's a little bit stiffer. This is definitely the norm. The idea of using an arcade button came from the Buckethead uh, Gibson Signature Series, and he has like this really huge red button about right here on the guitar. And uh, it's, it's clearly an arcade button. As a matter of fact, I'm sure it's the exact same one, only red instead of white. So that's what gave me the idea of, of getting one of those. These are fine if you're going to do just like, you know, very simple, I'll give you an example, but just very simple kind of, you know, rhythms. You know, if you're just gonna do something simple like that, this one works fine. My biggest complaint about this one is since it's small and since it's kind of stiff to push down on, it's hard to do complex rhythms. Like if I want to do like, let's see. I mean, I can do it, but it's not real precise. It's it's kind of hard to, to play quickly and with good timing with it. This one, on the other hand, and I'll, and I'll show it here for, with the Ibanez here in a minute, much, much easier to do those kind of rhythms. But getting back to what we were talking about, though, so wiring this thing, the, the information on the Internet is, is not right about that. So you want a uh, normally open button, which is what this is. Um, yeah, another, another way, another... Um description that you'll find is um, momentarily on that's that's good too and what what that and the reason being is that uh, with with this switch 
uh, you can sh you basically to have a, an effective kill switch. You want to, uh, it's in my experience, to to short out the signal to ground, eliminate it completely. You have to get the most, the, the cleanest, most effective kill uh, of the signal. And the other ones just tend to uh, you your, your signal is running through it all the time, and then when you press it, it it just it just cuts it in here. It doesn't short it out to ground. It's just all in the switch. So you want something, you want the switch just to create the action, but the physical part of the kill has to be shorting out to ground. That's why these work. And I think you've even been told that you can't do it with a switch. Right. Like this. Uh, yeah. yeah, I actually saw on the internet several different places. That's, and of course, these are just forums of people talking. Yeah. But you know, they're saying you can't use a, a quote-unquote regular button like that. You have to use the kind that is always on, and, yeah. and that's that's not true. It's, it's not. And this is the uh, this is definitely the preferred uh, uh, the momentary on switch. That's the way to go. It's it's the only way to go, really. And. Um, yeah, and as far as installation goes, like I said, there are two. You're going to get the switch. There are if you want if you're do-it-yourselfer, there are two terminals on here. It doesn't matter which one you use. You put the um, you just connect coming off. The simplest way to do it. It's not how I did it on Marks, but the simplest way to do it is it, it, because if you have more than one volume, um, or um, if you have like a Les Paul and you want to put a switch like this on there, um, you just take the 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 hot lead off the jack. Run it to one terminal here, and just take uh, the other, the second terminal, and run a ground wire to any, any a potentiometer or the jack itself, the ground in the jack, and you're done. And you just have to, you just just install it. You know, you have to find a place to put it. Right. That's a big hole to drill in your Les Paul. Yeah. If you could see, you know. Yeah. If you want it, they make smaller ones like that. That'll that'll fit effectively in a in a, um, say a three way toggle switch that size hole that would mm. fit in there mm. and uh, you might get something smaller but again but the, the general feel of this button is, is remarkable and uh, it's so it's so easy to use and so precise and complex rhythms not a problem not a problem very yeah. responsive very responsive and also the uh, these side brackets and I'll put a close-up uh, in the video but these make it quite a bit easier to install right yeah so on yeah, it's almost yeah it depends on the thing so let me grab from, the, from uh, a pick guard to um, if you're installing it into the, the body, uh, the, just the, the direct, just like on your on your jacks in there, mm -hmm. this is what's went to the pick guard. So it, they it it form fits any well thickness up to about probably a good, um, I don't know, not quite a quarter of an inch, but a little bit under that, and it'll 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 fit screw. That's this switch, right? What other ones? It just depends. I'm highly recommending this one. I mean, it's. I guess the cons of installing these would be, like Mike said, you're putting a pretty big hole in your guitar. But once it's in there, if, I mean, if you're interested in a kill switch, I guess you've already accepted the fact you're going to have a hole in your guitar because there's not really any other way to do it. It worked out really well on this one because the pick guard, the thickness of the pick guard is such on this guitar that the button went in there and those, those little clasps or whatever you want to call them grabbed onto it really well and it required no further modification. It's a nice tight fit. But you, I remember you telling me uh, one time when I stopped by that if it weren't for the pick guard and, and it was just wood, you could possibly get the wood to a thickness to where that could clasp on. Uh, yeah, on uh, on say it just um, it would depend on like if it was uh, in at this place yeah, that would be tough. You'd mm -hmm. almost have to route out from the. I just did a top route on this because you had the pick guard, mm -hmm. but you'd have to route out from the back just so that the. Um, uh, the thickness of the top, just like on a on a uh, well, these the Les Paul again, uh, where it's routed out from the back, and you just or or, um, or say uh, or even your Jackson guitar, it's routed from the back, and you just have to just you just have to uh, thin out the wood to the, the proper thickness of that. It wouldn't be too th it wouldn't be too thin that it would damage your guitar. You'd, but yeah, you need to be comfortable doing it mm -hmm. because yeah, if you go too far, you're and you need to find someone to do it that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Because you could have some serious damage, I would think. Yeah, stuff like, you know, you just want to be real careful unless right. you're, unless it's something you just you just have to try. And some people just have to try. So let's talk price a little bit because I think everyone's, you know, kind of interested in, you know, if they wanted to do a modification like this, what what are they getting into beyond putting a hole in their guitar and all that? So these 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 are called, I, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong, but I think it's called Sanwa or Sanwa, but it's S-A-N-W-A. 
And this is a uh, basically an official arcade button that you would find in like a, a Street Fighter arcade machine or whatever. They're really easy to find. Um, you know, you can go on Amazon and get like, uh, you know, a six pack of these for like $15. So the button itself is quite cheap. Now the other one, I'll grab this one again. This one is found on Amazon and, and possibly other places. This one is called an Iron Age button, and I believe that's the name of the company. This one goes for around $25. It's a little more expensive. I think part of the reason why is because you might be able to see here it lights up. So this was accomplished because this has active pickups and you're able to wire it to the 9 volt, right? Right. Okay. And even if you didn't have active pickups, if you wanted to put again, put in the Les Paul or something, um, you can just run a battery. There's plenty of room in the, in the cavity, in the electronics cavity, from uh, in most rear routed guitars. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, so this would be possible in any, even with that, even with passive pickups. You know? So the cost, uh, when it comes to the button, is is, is negligible. It's, it's next to nothing. It's the installation. So I'm assuming most of you watching probably aren't comfortable doing that kind of work yourself. If you are, well, then it's a really cheap thing to do. But if you need to hire someone to do it, um, like I know every guitar is different and all that, but what are people looking at to have this done for them, roughly? Um, well, it, it uh, kind of depends on a simple installation like this. If, um, if it was just the switch itself without the illumination, um, probably looking around like maybe $45 to install the switch, wire it up mm. in the circuit properly. Um, this, if we had to fit a battery, uh, sometimes in the compartment, you don't want the battery just, like, just hanging just there. Hanging loose, around. So right. you might want to put a battery clip in this, or not a clip, but a, a holder that uh, that secures it in place, so that it's not it's not um, it's not shaking around or rattling around in there. You can always wrap. You can do something simple, just wrap it with the foam and then tuck it in. But some people like a tidy installation, so it just mm -hmm. depends. And then on your white guitar, where there's routing involved. Um, it, it, that, a job like that could probably start around seventy-five dollars with the mm -hmm. with the routing and the, and the wiring it in. Uh, and again, it's just it's just off of labor time. So it just depends on you know it depends on the, the how sophisticated the installation is. But it sounds like for around a hundred bucks, you're probably good. To oh, get the easily, yeah, yeah, probably, e yeah, easily. If, easily. I, if it hit that, yeah, it would be a, a real particular installation. Right. But um, so the cost of the button and the installation, a hundred bucks max, probably. Yeah, and more than likely, you know, half that on a regular yeah. installation. Right. Easily. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So I think these are a great addition. I'm going to do uh, some demonstration with these, but I actually, uh, after I had the uh, the white one installed. I did a song called Corruptor and I did a uh, video playthrough of it, so I'm going to put a link to that right now. Um, it's a song where I, I really do a lot with the kill switch in that song, so it, it should be a good example of all the things it can do. The basic idea though is just by cutting out the sound, it's more of a rhythmic kind of thing. Um, if you're a fan of Rage Against the Machine, you're, you'll be very familiar with it. If you know Buckethead, you'll be very familiar with it. I've always thought it was a really cool way to add what I would call like how do I describe it? I'm, I'm kind of a big fan of analog effects, is what I kind of call it. And what I mean by that is I, I do like pedals and things like that. But anytime you can make the guitar sound strange using something that's not digital, I'm a big fan of that. Like, you know, whether it be like fluttering the tremolo like Steve Vai does or, or anything like that. Um, and this is really, you know, I would call this like an analog sort of effect, not just some digital process thing. And you have so much control over it. Like, you know, imagine a, a pedal that would cut out the right. sound over and over. There's no way you can control it. This is completely controlled by you. It just feels like a natural part of the instrument to me at this point. But I've been using one for years, so I, I guess I'm kind of used to it. But uh, I'm going to put a link to that song now, and that'll give you a good example of what it can do. And uh, also great, show you... Uh, just, uh, great great job on that song, by the way. Oh, thanks, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. And then, and then <laughs> when, I, when I heard that track, I was like... Right, because you know, like if you show me, if you asked me to demonstrate a, a kill switch, it would be pretty silly. It would just be what, what you think you would do, you know. But you took it to another level. So oh, thanks, way, I way appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. So listen, listen. <laughs> well, the basic idea, um, you really have to do a lot of hammer on and pull off because basically your right hand is not available to be picking for most of the time. So I'll go into a little more depth on this toward the end of the video. But basically, you know, you can't. 
it's, it takes too long to go from pick to button, pick to button. You really need to write something where it's it's more of a legato sort of thing, using hammer-ons and pull-offs. It's like the intro to that song is like... Something like that. And so you really need to like keep the note going with pull-offs so that your hand can be on you know the kill switch the entire time um now i mean that's just kind of a crash course of how to use them i'll go into more detail in a bit but mike thank you very much for uh walking us through that really appreciate it and uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your uh, business here in tucson oh um yes i've been in tucson uh since uh since 96 and um i've been in a variety of stores in town a lot of uh well hopefully a lot of you or some of you who are uh, who are watching this video um, they already know me, and uh, if not, uh, my my latest location is at uh, the northwest corner of Broadway and Swan. Uh, it's 4625 East Broadway, and it's it's in a, some office spaces just to the west of of Contiki. And um, anyway, and you can uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can reach me on my my phone is uh, 520-256-2292. You can call me just about any time. Text me. Texting works great. And um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to to answer them and uh, hopefully guide you and give you give you a variety of, of uh, options. You know, instead of just one, I'm not going to tell you what you have to do. I'm going to let you know what you can do with your guitar, and uh, and you can make the choice and. Uh, Go from there. And the business is called Luthier's Bench. The Luthier's Bench, yeah. yes. So if you do a search for the Luthier's Bench on Facebook, it should come right up. And you respond to messages on Facebook as well. I do. Texting, like I said, is, is the best. But I, I check, try and f- check Facebook um, at Facebook at least once a day. Uh, sorry, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's tough. And uh, so if you're writing me in the, if you write me in the morning... Um, and I and I don't respond to the afternoon. That's that's it. But texting is usually more more responsive. Right. So, well, uh, I uh, highly recommend Mike. I think he's the best in Tucson. Um, oh, thanks. I remember when I first met Mike. I actually needed my white gem to uh, the input jack on it was acting up, and so I brought it into him. And I think it was maybe the first time I ever met you. And you were about to leave the store, and he and Mike was just like, "Oh, let me see it." And he just took it in the back and wired it up real quick. And he's like, "Here you go." All right. See you later. Have a good night. <laughs> Didn't charge me anything. Don't expect. Yeah, that. don't expect that, right? But you know, it was just a really nice. <laughs> no, just kidding. And that was a really nice thing for him to do, though. Just you know, took you know, he was ready to leave and just stayed there to fix my guitar. Never met me before. Didn't charge me. Just said, "Have a good night. See you later." And uh, you know, that's. I mean, that's obviously really good, really good business. And I think that's why he's doing so well now. So can't recommend him enough. So give him a call if you have any work that needs done. Oh, nice. And yeah. uh, yeah. thanks again for coming over. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. And, uh, We're going to dig into how to use this button now, so uh, stay tuned for the second half of the video, and we'll get into that. And uh, see you again soon. Thanks again. All right. Take care. Hey, guys. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about the installation of these kill switches and how to choose them, um, let me talk about another section of this here, which is that not only do you need to choose the right kill switch, of which uh, I recommend the Sonwix switch quite a bit, uh, you also have to figure out where you want to put it. And this is a pretty big decision. Part of it's going to be, you know, depending on where you put it, could really change the installation cost quite a bit. You know, is is it already hollowed out in the back and you just need to put the button in? Does a lot of wood need to be routed out to make a cavity for it? There's a lot to consider, but just as far as playability, the Jackson has the kill switch right here between the volume and uh, tone knob. To me, I mean, it looks great, and I, I don't regret doing it. It looks really cool on that guitar, especially the glowing blue. It, it just fits that guitar perfectly. And it's not too hard to get to and use, but this one is vastly superior. And when I went to install this one, I told Mike, you know, I want the button right where I can get at it. And I was a little nervous about putting it here because I was afraid as I picked, you know, my, my fingers might rub across it and, and turn the guitar on and off, and it, it would be in the way, and I would just really regret it. But at least for my playing style and, and the way I pick, it worked out perfectly. I don't hit it accidentally. You know, you just have to make a conscious effort to keep your fingers out of the way of that button as you play. But after you get used to it, which didn't take me any time at all really, it's the perfect place to have it because as you pick, it's just right there. And, and the button is so much larger than the other one that it's just really easy to get to it. It's, it's hard to miss it. Um, with the smaller button, you know, you almost have to look down at your finger to hit the button because it's so small that you have to look at it to make sure you're, you don't miss it. With this one, it's just it's just so so much bigger. It's right there. It's really hard to miss. 
it's very very responsive and very easy to play so I put mine right there um, you may decide to put it somewhere else. I know on the bucket head guitar, it's way down here. I've noticed when he plays using the kill switch, a lot of times it'll be a very long section of hammer-ons and pull-offs, and he'll have his, his hand on the button basically the entire time as he's doing it, um, which is fine, but I wanted to be able to hit the button at any time while I'm playing and just just have it right there where I can get at it. So that's how I chose the location. So that's something you'll want to think about is where are you going to put the button? Where is it going to work best for you? You want it out of the way so you're not accidentally hitting it, but you don't want it so far away that you can't get to it or you miss it or anything else like that. So let's talk a little bit about how you use this thing. So uh, basically the idea is I, I, I kind of look at it as there's two ways you can go about it. One is you pick a note and then hit the button. <laughs> And I don't really use it that way very often. I more think of it as I need to establish like a legato line, and, and by that I just mean hammer-ons and pull-offs, so that the guitar is basically resonating notes and, and making sound without your right hand being needed, so that your right hand can be free to go to the button. So for Corruptor, the song I wrote, uh, I did a lot of this uh, pull-off and hammer-on stuff, so. And so as long as I'm doing hand runs and pull-offs, my right hand can be free to, to just work on the button. Um, it's a pretty simple concept, really, and you know, you can just pull off to an open string, works pretty well. Um, So you just get good at your legato, and uh, you know it's it's not too difficult to use. Um, but the it's that stutter effect is a very rhythmic sound, um, and that's the thing to remember if you get a kill switch and you want to learn to get pretty good at using it. It's you have to almost have like a drummer mentality when you use it because it doesn't really have anything to do with notes necessarily. It's more just tapping a rhythm. And so what I would do to practice this is just put on some drums. So I'm going to pull up uh, Easy Drummer here. Let's just put on like, you know, just uh, some typical sounding drums. Okay. So you know what you could do is just uh, pull off to the low E string from somewhere and just practice doing maybe quarter notes. So one, two, three, four. And then just start thinking to yourself, you know, what would be some cool rhythms over this? And you want to do it with timing. I think the, the key to the kill switch is your timing has to be really good to get that rhythmic sound going. So let's just uh, try some stuff with this. Using pull-offs to an open string, and then tapping the button in rhythm with the drums. So. That's just you know one idea. Um, you could do something a little slower than that, like. You know whatever you want to do. But I would definitely recommend playing, you know, like all guitar, with timing, with a metronome, with drums, with something. Um, you don't want to just you know. <laughs> you don't want to just do random, uh, you know, hitting the button randomly just because it's there and you can. I mean, if you really want it to be effective, it really does have to have a rhythmic quality to it. And it, that stutter effect is just really, really cool. And uh, I'm really, like I said earlier, I'm really surprised this isn't a more common thing. I'm surprised there are not a lot of guitars that, that come stock with one of these just as an option. Matter of fact, the only one I think I've ever seen is the... Uh, the Buckethead uh, Gibson Signature, which has, if I remember right, has two of these actually, one down here and then one kind of up here. But I've, I don't think I've ever seen a, a guitar come stock with one of these other than that one. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about when it comes to uh, the guitar kill switch is you may already have one on your guitar and not even know it. So another really common way to, to get this stutter effect is uh, the Tom Morello me method from Rage Against the Machine. 
so basically, I don't have a guitar like this, but you'll see it a lot on uh, Gibsons and other guitars, where each uh, pickup will have its own dedicated volume knob. So the idea is you turn one of them to 10, you turn the other to zero to where when you, when you change the pickup selector, you know, you either get full on volume with one pickup and then totally dead with the other. And then what you do is you, you move the pickup selector back and forth in a rhythm and that gives you the same kind of effect. So you may already have a guitar that you can do this on, so you can check that out. Um, you know, Tom Morello was very successfully doing that. Um, I much prefer actually having a button. You know, I, I just think, you know, the pickup selector was never meant for that, and who, who knows how often you had to replace those. But also the button, I think you can get much more articulate rhythms out of it much easier. So I would go that route. But anyway, that is a crash course on the kill switch. It's, it's a lot of fun. If you've been thinking about doing it, you know, so long as you don't put it, mind putting down the money, you know, we were saying anywhere from $50 to $100 for the whole project. It's pretty cheap, really. Um, pick out a good button, pick out uh, the location on your guitar for it, uh, get it done, and then have fun with it. Uh, I, I recommend them. I think they're a great time, and uh, it adds a whole new layer to your playing that is unique, at least at this point. Not many people have them, and uh, you can do some really cool stuff with it. So anyway, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Thanks again to Mike for coming over. Really appreciate his input. Uh, definitely check him out at the Luthier's Bench. If you live anywhere in the Tucson area, there's nowhere better you can go. The guy's amazing. So take care, everyone. Good to see you, and uh, talk to you again soon. Take care.